See, you know what I love about this lodge? When I pull up to it in the morning, it activates my drive. You know why I'm building the greatness factory in downtown Nashville? Because the energy in downtown Nashville. I love, it activates, when I'm in downtown Nashville, it's think bigger, right? I want to be right down in the middle of all that action. I want to hear the music playing because that is exposure, okay? And exposure is, man, I've seen something. And it's like Jay Kinder says, when you see something, you can't unsee it. Once you've seen it, now I can't unsee it, right? Once, once I see it and I got to go for it, now I can't go back to the way I used to be, Okay? When I was coming up in this business, they paid me $250 a day and $40 per diem. It's awfully hard to eat nice on $40. I stayed in crappy hotels, microtails, clarions. I hate them clarions. <laughs> clarions dress the lobby up, make it look good. Then you get to the room and it's bad. And man, I stayed in so many crappy hotels when I was doing this coming up through the business. I made up my mind, man, I ain't doing this anymore. You with me? I said, man, once I stayed in a nice hotel, I'm like, this is the way to live right here. This is so much better than that, right? Once I got a taste of it, I'm like, I ain't going back there. So, so, to, to, so the point is, this is seeing something that activates your prey drive, okay? So I got fear, fear of losing. I got competition. I got exposure to something. Now, this is what I was saying a minute ago. This is why all my, if, if, in, in today's world, this is what's really hard to build because so many people are working from home. How many of you know that you, per, you perform at a higher level when there's environment and expectation? I'm going to use a musical, uh, a musical example. I had kind of an, uh, a, an artist come one night who was in a rut. And I, and, I, and I paid him to play here at the lodge at a concert. It's one of my good friends. Been playing on Broadway for years. And Broadway is brutal. It will absolutely, if you don't make it, it'll just, it'll just knock the life out of you. Because you go down there every night and you play and you got different people and it seems like it'd be fun. But, but if you never make it and you just do that every night for years, you almost come to resent it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like I got to go sing songs and I got to play for everybody who's drunk and I got to do this and I'm going to make $40 tonight. So one of my buddies had done that for 10 years on Broadway. And, and my wife kept saying, man, he's in a rut and he don't have any passion, and he ain't got any drive. And so I hired him to come out here and play. And, and that gave him a little kickstart. And then I brought in Lewis Bryce, which is Lee Bryce's brother. And he had all this fire and energy, because he's up and coming, he's trying to make it big. And I'm sitting there watching my guy over there on the side. And I walked up there and got the microphone, and I said, I want to see you two sing together. I want you to pick a song and sing it together for everybody. And you should have seen how my guy upped his level to play side by side with them. It was awesome. It was like just getting in the arena and the environment. It's like I got to play up. Some of you during this period, you got out there in La La Land, you work from your home office, you get up late, you drag around, you don't have a structure. You don't. I told you, I'm at my best when I'm in that gym at 5 a.m. Yes or no? Okay, so, so if I know that, Tonight, when it comes time to go to bed, I'm like, man, I need to get my butt up in the morning. I need to go to bed because I feel so much better. You with me? What, is, what environment do you need to be in? If I came to your office, what structure do we need to create so people are operating at a high level? That's environment. Okay, I asked Elko once how Saban built Alabama. He said four things. Identity, we're the best. That's what he told him. Number two, Language. We have a common language. Number three, um, standards. We don't lower our standards. Number four, accountability. We hold people accountable to what they're supposed to do, which is the part that sucks. Nobody wants to hold people accountable on anything. That's environment. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you one more, and then I want you to tell me what you think is your primary activator. So, Jessica, what is your group missing right now? Because you're trying to activate the drive, you're the leader. Okay, so I would sell these agents on one thing. You could work at home if that's what you want to do. You can be out there on if that's what you want to do. Let's all get in here together and get after it. We'll perform at a higher level if we're in here fighting with each other, fighting for each other. See, this is a, this is a big activator of my prey drive, embarrassment, because I'm a defensive pessimist, which means 
which means I think about things that we could do better. Like, we could do that better. We could do that better. We could do that better. So for me, all of these activate my prey drive, but this is number one. This is probably two, three, for me, four, five. There, that, that would be my five, the way it act, my prey drive is activated. Now, how many of you watched The Last Dance with Jordan and the Bulls? Anybody watch that? If you haven't, you need to watch it. It is a great example because Michael Jordan would create things to activate his prey drive. He would just make up things. Anything he could find. Because when you play at that level, you're looking for any kind of edge. Right? So, so they would say, we're putting the number one defender on you tomorrow night in the NBA. And he'd be like, oh, you will put the number one defender on me? Let me show you how great I am versus the number one defender. He had the flu once. Scored 63 points with the flu. Why? Because everybody thought, man, he's not going to be any good tonight. He's got the flu. See, he loved, he thrived when people didn't think he could do it. And if he didn't have that, he actually made it up. He actually made it up. So could I use a perceived slight to activate my prey drive? Yes or no? Like you don't think I'm good enough? Okay, I'll show you. Okay? Oh, you don't think I'm, right? Like, like I could actually use a negative emotion, fear, disappointment, anger, rejection, whatever. I could actually convert that negative to a positive and use it. Okay, now I'm going to give you one example, then I'll let you tell the people at your table what activates yours. I was supposed to be on this big, during the pandemic, I was going to be on uh, Pete Vargas' big conference. Pete Vargas had this big conference. And I love Pete. And he does speak and all this stuff. And I was going to be on, on, on Thursday day, and I was going to be on there with Tony Robbins and Damon John and all these famous people. And then Thursday came, and they said, you know what, we're kind of overbooked today, Coach Burt. We're going to push you to Saturday. But we're going to give you more time on Saturday. So the trade-off is we're taking you off the day with all these famous people, and we're going to put you on Saturday, but we're going to give you more time. So Saturday morning comes. I put a suit on. It's a virtual event. All right, I've got an hour. I'm going to get on there and coach for an hour to thousands of people, like 3,000 people, and I get a text message. And they said, well, we added Gary Chapman, who wrote the Five Love Languages, and he's more known than you are. So we're actually going to decrease your time to 15 minutes. Okay, because Gary Chapman, who wrote the five love languages, is on there. I'm like, five love languages, whatever, okay? <laughs> now, I'm just joking. Now, here, here so, okay, so, so, so now, now, I've gone from being excited about this opportunity to I am pissed. You bumped me off Thursday because you didn't think I was good enough to be on there with Tony Robbins. Now, you got me on Saturday, but I'm not good enough to take the full hour. You're giving Gary Chapman a full hour, and you're bumping me down to 15 minutes. And I'm, I'm mad. I got up, I got dressed, I put a suit on. It's a virtual event. And I'm like, man, what am I going to do with this anger? What am I going to do with all this anger right now? Because I'm about to go live to 3,000 people in a few minutes. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be so good that they ain't never going to forget it. That's what I'm going to do. And here's what they told me. After it's over, we're going to keep some of the speakers in the green room and, and to do Q&A. But coach, we don't need you to do the green room. And I'm like, okay. So they gave me 15 minutes. And man, for 15 minutes, I just hit it as hard as I could on confidence. And there were so many comments in the chat box. They come back and they said, you know, can you stay over in the green room? You know what I said? No, I'm busy today. <laughs> take, take old Gary Chapman in the green room. <laughs> Since he's so good. You understand what I'm saying? Because the truth is, he writes great books, but he ain't that good, especially when you hear him speak. So I knew I could run circles around that dude, but he was more famous than me. And man, it just pissed me off so much. So, so it was really that day that I had a big revelation. And the revelation is, you, you need these moments because it actually converts, right? Like when you convert energy, you take energy and you convert it. So you can convert negative energy to positive things if you just know how to do it. And you actually need those things to get to that level, like to peak up to that level. That, that is prey drive. And so it was just one of those moments in life, man. I walked out of there and went home and told my wife. She said, how'd you do? And I said, I hit it. It's all good. I feel good about it, right? And I impacted those people.